टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एंजाइना पेक्टोरिस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एंजाइना एंड ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ एंजाइना नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल व्हाट इज बेसिकली एंजाइना पेक्टोरिस व्हाट इज एंजाइना पेक्टोरिस नाउ एंजाइना इज बेसिकली कार्डिक पेन इट इज सिंपली कार्डिक पेन नाउ why angina arises what how uh, it arises now how angina arises basically we have discussed previously that the heart is being supplied by some blood vessels known as coronary blood vessels this is for example a coronary vessel and it is supplying this portion of the heart now if this coronary vessel is occluded for example the blood flow in this coronary vessel is stopped blood cannot flow due to atherosclerosis or due to some other reasons now the portion this portion of the heart which is being supplied by this uh, vessel it will not be receiving enough oxygen and enough blood and it will lead to ischemia it will lead to ischemia if the blood flow to this portion is completely stopped due to complete occlusion of the coronary vessel then it is known as myocardial infarction or mi or heart attack now that is something which we have discussed previously in detail we have discussed myocardial infarction we have also discussed different complications of myocardial infarction now if this occlusion is not complete if this com- occlusion is not complete for example there is partial occlusion of this uh, blood vessel and the blood flow to this portion of the heart is decreased blood flow and oxygen supply to this portion of the heart is decreased now due to the decreased blood flow there will be ischemia and due to the de- ischemia although the exact the exact uh, mechanism through which this anginal pain or cardiac pain arises is not known but it is said that due to ischemia there is production of lactic acid lactic acid and some other kinins and some pain uh, receptor activators like histamines these substances uh, these substances act on pain receptors in these areas in the cardiac muscles they act on the pain receptors when they act on the pain receptors pain is felt in uh, in the heart area or which is basically known as cardiac pain or angina pectoris now this cardiac pain or angina pectoris has different types depending upon the pathology that is occurring in the coronary vessel but the angina pectoris is simple cardiac origin pain and it arises when there is decreased blood flow to certain uh, portion of the heart muscles due to which there is ischemia and due to ischemia there is production of different substances like lactic acid kinins and histamines um, which activates the pain receptors in the cardiac muscles and then these pain receptors they send signals sig- send signals to brain and then the person gets aware of the pain in the chest or cardiac region now depending upon the pathology uh, there are different types of angina <clears throat> there are different types of angina but first of all where is the pain felt where is the pain felt so basically the chest uh, the the pain the pain is normally felt this anginal pain is normally felt on the left side of the chest on the left side of the chest mostly behind the sternum this is for example this is the sternum so it is mostly felt behind the sternum in the epigastric region sometimes on the left shoulder left arm and left neck or, or in the neck 
Now, why is it mostly felt uh, in these area? Why it is being felt in the left shoulder? Why in the left arm? In the neck? It is because the heart origin, the heart, the origin of the heart, and origin of the left arm and neck. These, yeah, uh, basically embryologically, in embryologically. origin of these uh, structures is the same and they all come from the neck region embryologically so the pain is felt in these areas so angina pectoris is cardiac origin pain uh, it occurs because uh, there is ischemia in the heart which leads to certain chemicals which innervate or which basically stimulate the pain receptors and it is felt basically in the chest left shoulder left arm in the neck and sometimes in the face and because because these areas have embryologically same origin like the heart heart also or embryologically come from the neck region so the pain is also felt in these areas now what are the different types what are the different types so a uh, different types of angina are so first of all the stable angina stable angina now we have discussed in a myocardial infarction that the decrease in blood flow to the heart muscle or the cardiac muscle is due to the occlusion of coronary vessels and most of the coronary vessel occlusion is due to the atherosclerosis or atherosclerotic uh, plaque formation now we discussed that atherosclerosis occurs because of the deposition of cholesterol inside the coronary vessel due to which the flow of blood through this vessel is decreased now if only partially if that uh, this blood vessel is partially occluded so that blood can flow to through this blood vessel but the uh, the blood flow is basically decreased blood can flow but decrease uh, the flow is basically decreased so normally there is no pain there is normally this is there is no pain but when a person starts exercise or exertion and the cardiac output or the demand for the uh, blood is increased and this heart rate or the force of contraction of the heart increases then the pain starts and that type of angina is known as stable angina that type of angina is basically stable angina because it subsides is it subsides with rest when the patient rests and stops exercise stops exertion and the cardiac output returns to normal then this uh, pain will go away and uh, the patient will get some relief and this type of angina is basically known as the stable angina now another kind another type of angina is basically unstable angina this is unstable angina now what happens in the unstable angina is that this is the coronary vessel for example this coronary vessel here it has been taken now what happens in the unstable angina now you must know that unstable angina is basically a type of acute coronary syndrome acute coronary syndrome has basically three types or there are three main uh, manifestations of acute coronary syndrome one is unstable angina unstable angina second is uh, anstemi and uh, finally stemi these are something which we will uh, discuss uh, in medicine and uh, in the coming lectures that is uh, known st elevation myocardial infarction and st elevation myocardial infarction so basically unstable angina is a kind of is a type of basically acute coronary syndrome and what happens is that this atherosclerotic plaque this atherosclerotic plaque this is not normal this is not 
stable that's why it is considered as unstable angina why is it unstable because this plaque has ruptured this plaque has ruptured here we have the epithelium sorry the endothelium now the endothelium we know that the atherosclerosis is present below the endothelial cells in the stable angina this endothelium is intact but in unstable angina this endothelium has been damaged and this plaque or this thrombus has increased in size and it basically occludes the coronary vessel even in rest even in resting condition so stable angina occurs when the patient is exercising or is doing some exertion and it disappears with rest but in unstable angina this uh, atherosclerotic plaque has damage the endothelium and it is occluding the blood vessel or there is some formation of thrombus which is occluding the blood flow and anginal pain or angina can occur even in resting condition the patient may not be doing exer exertion and it is occurring and this unstable angina it is a risk factor for myocardial infarction or acute coronary occlusion or heart attack and that's why it is being labeled as unstable and uh the the difference is the difference is that the atherosclerotic plaque in is unstable and that's why we call it unstable angina now finally uh, the final uh type the third type of the angina pectoris is the vasospastic or prince metal angina the vasospastic vasospastic or prince metal angina now what is basically with a spastic or prince metal angina now we will take this uh, coronary vessels was once again the same coronary vessel has been taken here once again what happens in the vasospastic angina is that there is no atherosclerosis this is basically a clear vessel there is no atherosclerotic plaque there is no occlusion but due to some conditions there is spasm there is spasm of the coronary vessel which leads to pain even in rest even in resting condition so there is basically occlusion or constriction of the coronary vessel there is occlusion or constriction or spasm there is basically spasm of the coronary vessel that's why it is labeled as vasospastic or prince metal angina it can also occur even in resting condition but the difference is that in unstable angina there is an atherosclerotic plaque which has basically damaged the endothelium but in the vasospastic angina or prince metal angina there is no atherosclerotic plaque here we have some atherosclerotic plaque in even in unstable angina but in the vasospastic or prince metal angina there is no plaque and this is due to the vasospasm or the constriction of the uh, coronary vessel which is basically decreasing the blood flow which is basically decreasing the blood flow so in the stable angina there is an atherosclerosis uh, there is atherosclerosis but the endothelium of the vessel has not been damaged in the unstable angina there is um, there is uh, atherosclerosis and it has damaged the endothelium and the pain occurs here the pain occurs in exertion and it subsides with rest in unstable angina the pain can occur even in the resting condition and it is very dangerous because it is unstable and it can any time lead to myocardial infarction or rather it is considered as a pre mi condition and finally in the vasospastic angina prince metal angina it is it can also occur in rest but the difference is that there is no atherosclerosis the vessels are basically clean but due to some condition they are constricting and the, due to the constriction the blood flow to the area is decreased and due to which there we uh, this area develops ischemia and then ischemia leads to the same lactic acid histamine and other uh, substances which uh, basically uh, stimulate the pain receptor now how to treat the angina pectoris how to treat now most of the time two types of medicines are used for angina one is sublingual nitrates sublingual nitrates as soon as the patient starts developing pain 
these medicines are given sublingually and the pain subsides and it is used in all of the angina and it is it has very good effects and the second thing is the sec uh, now we are not going to discuss in detail the sublingual nitrates that like what are sublingual nitrates how they uh, are acting and uh, what are their side effects but uh, we are just considering angina pectoris uh, from physiology point of view and then we will discuss these things in our medicine and pathology se uh, section and the second thing which is used in the treatment of angina is beta blockers so beta blockers basically decrease the frequency of uh, pain and it basically decreases the chances of ischemia in the heart because ischemia is responsible for the pain so it decreases the chances of ischemia so these are the two treatment options there are other treatment options depending upon the level of occlusion depending upon the level of occlusion but most of the time these two uh, the sublingual nitrates or the uh, nitrate spray or uh, nitroglycerin spray or and the beta blockers they are used so uh, that's all about the angina pectoris there are three types stable unstable vasospastic and stable it stable angina comes with uh, due to uh, exertion and it subsides with rest unstable and vasospastic angina comes even in resting condition but in unstable angina there is atherosclerosis and in vasospastic angina there is no atherosclerosis there is just constriction of the coronary vessel so that's all about angina pectoris